Hey everyone, welcome back. So in this video we're going to be looking at Java I.O. fundamentals. I.O. is short for input output. So we're going to look at how to read input from the outside world into our program and then uh, spit some output back. So we might have, for example, input from a text file and then we might want to output it to another text file. Or we might have a picture, so we might want to load the picture into memory. How would we do that? All of this we, we use a set of Java libraries um, that are a little convoluted, but they're pretty useful, and you'll see how to use them in this video. Okay, so first we're going to learn how to read from the console. The console in Eclipse is right over here. We can read to it, and we've been writing to it for a very long time. We've been using system.out.println, for example. So to read from it, what we're going to do is we're first going to create a scanner instant instance. So this scanner, what it does is it hooks up to an input stream that the system provides. So what is an input stream? An input stream is a stream of data that we can read from. So you can imagine a river that has two points, so point A and point B. As the water flows from point A to point B, you know, someone might have a basket and might be collecting the water. So similarly, what we're doing is there's this flow of data, and we're just try we're just gathering that data as fast as we can. And that's kind of what an input stream is. We're putting that input stream into the scanner, and then we're going to continually read from the scanner. So to do that, we're just going to do this. While scanner dot has next line. So what this means is it's going to continue until we don't have any more lines. We're just going to say string input is equal to scanner dot next line. So while while the console is active, while we can still gather input, we're going to get every new line that the user enters. So for example, I'm going to enter in here. So let's just try this out and I'll demonstrate how this is working internally. We'll run this and now we'll go to our console and now I'm going to type in something like hello. So I've typed in something like hello and as soon as I hit enter, what's going to happen is that we're going to we're like the, we're going to be provided some content in our input thing. Let me actually demonstrate by using the debugger. I think that's going to be a little more effective. Okay, so I'm right here. So while scanner has next line, we're here, and now we pause. We don't do anything until the user provides or presses the enter button. As soon as I press the enter button, then we go inside of here, and then I can fetch the input. Right, so you see what's going on here? I'm typing something and then after I've typed the enter key, then the program knows, okay, fetch all of the input that was entered before the user pressed the enter key. In this case, that was hello. All right, so now I'm just gonna let the program run and we see that I got to hello. Okay, so now I'm gonna type in another line and now I'm gonna type in, I'm gonna, I'm gonna press the enter key again, I'm gonna, I'm gonna press the return key. And as soon as I've pressed the return key, let's see here, it hit the breakpoint again, so I'm just gonna I'm gonna close this program, get rid of this breakpoint, go back to my Java perspective and run again, go to my console, hello, and then I could type in sad and so on and so forth. And so on and so forth. Right? So you see I'm just pressing the entry key and then it's gathering all of the input up to that point. Okay, so that's how we read stuff from the console. This is useful when we maybe want to create a calculator, right? So we can, we can let's say that we assume that the format is going to be something like this, 3 plus 2. So you always have the first integer, then you have another integer, and then you have some kind of operand in between them, or operate, operator, sorry. So you're going to have some kind of operator in between two operands. Um, and, and then in that case, you can just do something like uh, int first operand is equal to first dot is equal to input dot split by for example plus zero and then you would parse this to an integer and so on. Okay. So that works fine, but what about reading and writing to something kind of like outside our programming environment? Suppose we want to write to suppose we want to write to a file. Now what do we do? Well, when we want to write to a file, we use something called an output stream. Output stream. So an output stream, it so yeah, it's exactly what it's, what it says here. It accepts output bytes and then sends them to some sync. Okay, so let's create one. 
output stream is equal to new output stream. If we try to create an output stream, well, in order, it's an anonymous, it's an abstract class, so we would have to provide some kind of implementation. So in this case, we can use something. We we can we can do this. What we're gonna do is we're gonna first create a file. File file is equal to new file, and then let's say that the file's name is going to be test.txt. So it's just gonna be a text file, right? So now, okay, so let's run this and our program is going to crash. But suppose we wanted to avoid this kind of crash. Suppose we wanted to provide some kind of message to the user instead of having our entire program crash. So if, if our program crashes, we can do something like this. Instead of having the entire program crash and terminate execution, we can we can put anything that might cause a problem inside a try catch clause. So anything that might anything that crashes inside of a try clause, we go inside of our catch clause. This catch clause it catches it it, it it catches any null pointer exceptions. So anytime there's a null pointer inside of this try inside of these blocks that are within this try uh, within this try clause, then we're just going to go inside of here and we're going to continue and then we're just going to print out any kind of error that we get inside of here. We can then continue with our program's execution as normal. Continue program's execution as normal. And then, you know, we can, well, we can just go until we terminate our main method. This is especially useful when you're working with stuff like um, network requests. How many times have you been downloading a file and then lost your internet connection? Well, the entire program didn't crash. You were probably given some kind of error saying, oh, you've lost network connectivity. Uh, you know, go go to somewhere where you have Wi-Fi or try to reconnect again in an hour or so or something like that, right? You're, the program didn't crash, but you were able to, the, yes, the programming crash, and you were able to reconnect at a later time and then continue downloading the file. So that that's why they're so useful and why they're actually necessary when we're using output streams and input streams and all of that stuff. Because, you know, sometimes the file doesn't exist or we, we aren't able to create the file because we don't have permission on, we don't, we don't have permission to do so. And so if we don't, then we need to let the user know that that's the case by providing some kind of error message. And that's why we use try catch, uh, like try catch clauses. Okay, so let me call this guy out now. And so now I have this output stream, and let me write some content out. So in order to write content out, what I'm actually doing is I'm writing a byte array out. So if I want to write hello out, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to write hello, and then I'm going to convert it um, to a byte array by calling this get bytes method. Now we find that when we're creating the output stream, we need to watch out for file not found exceptions, right? But when we're writing to a stream, we also need to watch out for and just general I.O. exceptions. So general exceptions that might happen when we're writing a file. Maybe the computer gets shut down, or, or not, that's a bad example. But maybe, I don't know, something happens in the middle of writing the file that prevents us from finishing it. And if that's the case, we might want to say system.out.println IO exception couldn't finish writing the file, and then we might want to say something completely different up here. Printlen uh, file was found. Aborting right. Okay, so you might be wondering what these parameters are. Um, this E parameter for this file not found exception. These just contain useful information about why we're in the catch clause. Why did the program, um, like, why did we leave the try catch clause? What caused us to, what error caused us to go in here? And so we can print out the stack trace, which is which is just um, like a human readable version of the error. Anyways, now that we've written out hello, we can close our output stream, and that'll. Um, That'll let the system free any resources, uh, any uh, yeah, any resources we're using right now that that are related to writing and uh, reading and writing. So now we run and nothing happened in the console, 
But now if we refresh our project directory and go into our test.txt file, we'll see that we've written hello out. Pretty exciting. So let's change the contents just to get a feel for how this is working. We can change it to something like that. And then the contents of our test file change accordingly. OK, so that wraps up basic reading and writing. We're going to go into this in a little more detail in the next few videos. I'll see you guys.